Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to add text to an image and specifically what we're going to be looking at here is how to add some text um, that gives credit to you, the photographer, when we're going to print your work. So let's jump into it here. So I have a, a Google Doc I'll be following along with um, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop to look at what the final product is going to look like. What we want, and then we can kind of work backwards, what we want is to identify the photographer here, photo by Mr. Stansfield, and we want that text to appear relatively small in one corner, one of the four corners. We're going to prioritize the bottom. If we can get it on the bottom, that seems to be the best when people are looking at images. They like to see it at the bottom there. It looks a little awkward if it's anywhere else. Um, it looks a little bit less awkward if it's on the top than if it's like in the middle somewhere. And we want that text to be legible, but also we want to be able to see the photo. We don't want it to interrupt the photo too much. So this is one solution that I have here. Photo by Mr. Stansfield. The text is in white on the bottom right hand corner of this particular photo. But let's jump into this and talk about how to go about creating this from the beginning. So I'm going to go into my history and back up here. Go back to this uh, uh, open. Actually, correction, I'm going to go back here because you want to do this after you've sized the image for printing. So you, you want to make sure that this process, the adding the text, is after you do the resizing for a 4x6 printer. So do that first, then do this step. And the sort of specifics of, of what I'm going to show you and the specifics that are in that Google Doc that we're going to use as a reference, those things won't work correctly or they won't look quite right if you haven't done the resizing first. So opening up this image, it's uh, sized for uh, the 4x6 printer. Let's jump back here to our Google Doc. Number one, open Photoshop. Open the file that you sized to 4 inches by 6 inches. Select the Type tool. You can use the keyboard shortcut by using the letter T on the keyboard. So the Type tool is over here. If you can't see it over here, if you hit the letter T on the keyboard, it'll jump to it. You can also click and hold it. If for some reason you saw one of these other tools, you want the horizontal type tool. That's the tool that we're looking for. Number three, open up the character palette and the paragraph palette. You can find these under the window menu at the top of the screen. So I've got them open over here, but if you don't have those, you can go window, character, and you want the character, not the character styles, but the character palette. So if I click on that, you can see here's the character palette. And then window, paragraph, not paragraph styles, but paragraph. And that uh, will open that uh, panel up over here. So we have character and paragraph that we can select. And then if we click over here, and uh, you can minimize it. So depending on the view that you have, you may want to um, select those from the window or put them elsewhere if you have a multi-screen setup or something like that, whatever um, you, whatever makes sense for you, but you want to have access to these two palettes here. Let's go back to our, um, our list here. So number four, stick with the default font Myriad Pro and select a font size of 16 to start. Start with the black type color. You may change it to white. Don't change it to anything else. Click anywhere to start typing. Type photo by first name, last name. Um, capitalize the P in photo. Capitalize the appropriate letters of your name. And don't include the quotation marks. I'm using a lot of quotation marks in this list here, but don't uh, use those in your image. So let's jump into it here. So we're going to grab the character palette. We're going to make sure that the font is Myriad Pro. There it is, the default, regular, all that. What we want is the font size to 16 points PT, 16 PT. Everything else can stay as it is. And then you could do this a couple of ways. So you can look at this and decide, okay, it makes sense to have white text in the bottom right, like we saw, but you don't necessarily know that by looking at the image. So generally speaking, I would recommend starting with a black color. So here in the color picker, if you click on this little white box, your, your box may be um, black or gray or a, a different color. Um, if you choose red, for example, it'll be a little bit more obvious. You'll also see it up here at the top. But if you click on that, you're going to drag it to the upper left for white and the bottom left for black. So let's start with black and then we can start typing. And if you just click anywhere in here, it doesn't matter where, you can start typing photo by first name, last name. And then click the little check mark up here. Grab the move tool 
and then you can start moving it around. So if we drag it down here to the bottom left, we can see that with the black text, we lose the second half of my name. So this is important. You want to look at the image and try it out in different places. Drag it over here to the right. We really lose all of that text in the bottom right. Upper left, actually pretty good. And I can click over here on the character palette to minimize it so that I can make space to move this over here to the upper right. Also pretty good. So I would say if I wanted black text, this upper left hand side right here is probably best. Otherwise, what I can do is if I have over here in the layers palette, you can see the text horizontal type tool has created a new layer. I can actually now, if I have this layer selected, go over here to color and I can change it by dragging up to the left and it'll change the, the, the text and I can drag it down here to the bottom right. If your name is um, really long um, and uh, you want to make your font slightly smaller to fit into a space, you can do that. I probably wouldn't go much smaller on a 4x6 image like this than 12 or 14 points. If your name is really, really short, um, maybe two or three letters for your first and, and or your last name and, and you want to make your font slightly bigger, you can. Um, generally, this particular size reads well on the, on, the, on the wall. When we make these prints, we want to have the image be the, the thing that people are, are, are looking at primarily. So we don't want to distract from the image. So there is some room for edits after you create the text and then uh, it's about placing it. So find a corner, prioritize the bottom. If you can get it on the bottom, great. Um, and you know, over here on the, on the left hand side would also be actually a pretty good place for this text when it's in white. Only use black or white. Only use Myriad Pro. That's the default. Um, use somewhere, let's say, between 12 and 18 points. I wouldn't go outside of that window. Um, if for some reason something's not working and you're in between the 12 and, and 18 points um, for the font size, um, check in with me and we'll, we'll look at your um, files together. Um, so there you go. Let's go look at our Google Doc here. Um, Number nine, use the move tool to place the text in one of the corners, prioritize the bottom if possible. 10, change the font size and font color, black or white only to fit. Save as a Photoshop document, then save as a JPEG version. So let's do that. So when you are done, you wanna save it as a, as a Photoshop document because if you want to edit your text later, you can't if you save it as a JPEG. So you wanna save two versions. First, save it as a Photoshop document, file save as. Let's go ahead into there, file save as. Um, oops, I said save a copy accidentally. We don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit cancel. File, save as, and we want to go ahead and um, find the right place. Um, make sure that it's named correctly, right? Last name, underscore, first name, underscore, period, whatever period we are, and then the assignment. So this is going to be um, uh, 4x6, 4x6, print, 1. Um, and we want to save the format as a, as a Photoshop format, okay? Now, your window may look slightly different because uh, I'm working with Photoshop 2021, the latest version. Um, if you are working with an older version, it, it's going to look slightly different. But down here under Format, you should see Photoshop as an option. I only have four options here. Unless I click Save a Copy, you're going to see a lot more options there, and I'll show you how to access that those um, in a minute. So save it as a Photoshop document. I'm going to hit Cancel just to kind of keep my stuff organized, um, but you want to click save there, and then we're going to go ahead and file save as. I'm going to choose save as a copy, again, because I'm using the latest version, and you can see you're going to see these options when you go to file save as if you're using uh, something uh, older than uh, Photoshop 2020 or, or older, I think, um, CC2 2020. So you're going to choose JPEG here, and what that will do is it will flatten so you don't have those layers anymore. So that's what we want. Save it, name it. Um, it can have the same name. And, and then you can have you know, the file extension be PSD or JPEG. Don't ever, if you look right here at this JPG, um, don't ever manually change the extension here. Whenever you're renaming, you always wanna select everything in front of the period, JPG. But if you change it to a Photoshop document here, you'll see that .psd is an option. Um, uh, not, not a, it's not an option. It is the file extension. You don't wanna ever manually override that. You always wanna save your work um, with that, uh, let the format down here determine what the file extension is. There you go. And then uh, make sure you name it and save it and all that.
All right, you're going to turn in the JPEGs uh, and hold on to the PSDs. You leave the PSDs saved in your Google Drive, those Photoshop documents, and you turn in the JPEGs. You want to have access to those PSDs, those Photoshop documents, so that you can edit it after the fact if it's not quite right.